call the meeting to order. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our regular council meeting for Monday, May the 27th. That the start of the approval agenda, that the May 27th, 2019 agenda be adopted as presented. Moved, second. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Adoption of the minutes, that the minutes of the regular council meeting held May 13, 2019 be adopted as presented. So moved. Moved, second. Any errors or omissions? Thank you. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Breakdown of delegations. It's nice to see Deborah are not here. Welcome, Deb, from Community Futures. Well, thank you very much for allowing me to be on your agenda tonight. <laughs> You guys have already had a full agenda before I even arrived here, my goodness. I just want to give you, uh, just, to, just to kind of give you an update of what's happening. Uh, I see new faces around the table, so congratulations. Um, so if you've probably been seeing me a lot regularly, I think it's really important for you to know the, the good work that Community Futures does. I should just also mention that um, Councillor Medlock and Councillor Victor are also on our board, so we're very fortunate to have them. Very fortunate. So with, with regards to community futures, um, our mandate is job creation through self-employment. That we have been, oh gosh, our office has been going since 1988, so we're non-profit, we've been around for a long time. Uh, one of the things that I'm very proud of with community futures is we are a line item on the federal budget, and we are the only non-profit corporation that has ever been able to do that. So we obviously have a lot of work that needs to be done, otherwise we'd be just struggling every year. But uh, yeah, I think that's something that uh, should be noted. Hope actually joined Community Futures uh, Sun Country in 1995. There were some changes and at that time the federal government was looking at ensuring that all rural communities were covered by a Community Futures office. So at that time, Hope was considering, you know, maybe Abbotsford, Chilliwack area. The government came back, and this is um, how it was done. They looked at a map down um, in Vancouver and basically drew the lines around and said, well, Hope looks really close to Ashcroft. So that's how it was done. We sat around and said, well, actually, we're not that close. But you know what? It is what it is, and it's worked out really well. I think it's been a really good relationship with the Fraser Canyon because we're connecting up there and we're trying to push people down the canyon and support our businesses along there. So that's worked out really well. So with regards to hope and the loans, which um, that's something we work really hard on. We're finding that many businesses are going to banks and credit unions trying to borrow funding. And if they're starting out, well, it's pretty tough one unless they want to merge their homes. And anybody that's usually starting a business, uh, you know, we're tra tapping into the younger crowd, they don't have any assets. So unless they get mom and dad to co-sign or those kind of things, they just don't feel they have the independence to run a business. So as Community Futures, we're able to look at those kind of loan applications. We do a lot of character lending. It's not always about the assets. It's about the business plan, how strong it is, and it's really about the character of the individual. And so we are very different from the banks and credit unions. So just for hope alone, we have lent uh, 54 loans in the community since 1995, $2,137,738. And that's not, I'm not even taking into consideration the leveraging we're doing here. This is direct from Community Futures that has been invested in your community of hope. I just wanted to mention that the average actually for hope is about 39500 is the loan. For hope that kind of gives you an idea of what we're working with. I also wanted to share, uh, you know, I'm sure, and if you haven't, I'm just going to give you a little update on the wildfire business transition project. Community Futures was, um, well, I, I'll say we were very aggressive when we had the fires in July 2017. Um, I was one of them that was evacuated for the entire summer. And myself and another colleague that was also evacuated. We started communicating through texting, emails to see how everything was doing. I met a lot of our business in the ESS and recognized right away that we've got some trouble because Red Cross is, has covered individuals, but the businesses were totally forgotten. So with Community Futures, we were able to leverage um, $2.2 million. I tried really hard, I need to tell you, I tried really hard to advocate to have hope included, but they felt that hope wasn't as hit as hard as everybody else because people were still traveling to Copahalla. 
they did go down as far as Boston Bar, though. <laughs> so we were able to you know, include Boston Bar, so many of the businesses there have been able to tap into um, business uh, support, whether it be training, um, some funding, um, self-directed training. So that's, a, that's quite a big deal for our small businesses to see that kind of free training. That really doesn't happen at all in my time that I've been here. That training has been covered. Also another project that I wanted to tap into, and you'll notice in your package, there's a map of the McAfee Fossil Bed site. I got involved with McAfee's in May 2016. I was called by the province asking about this site that was just had a cash break. And they were advising that, you know, uh, they were trying to move this forward, uh, but we're not having um, much success. So my first question was, great, well, who's around the table to find out there was no local? And I said, well, that's, it'll never move unless you have somebody local. If you need your local champions, I said, that's kind of like CED 101. Like, if, you, if you're trying to decide what's going to happen in our community, you're going to get pushback because people want to have a say in what's happening. So, uh, yeah, we started May 2016 and it was a working group. Recognized very quickly there needed to be some planning done. So, as the manager with Community Futures, I informed my board and said, you know what, this is a great opportunity for the entire region. We've got an opportunity to bring in millions of people into the region. So they'd be coming through Hope and coming down. Because that's my big thing, so I'm trying to get people to go up the canyon. So I uh, started working there and Community Futures took the lead. And since then, um, we've been able to get some funding to do a business plan. We've got funding in actually to actually work on the site itself. I've been working with Heritage Branch very, very closely in the Long Part Indian Bell. This is going to be an Indigenous term, tourism destination site. That's something we recognized probably a month into May, you know, probably June 26, 20, when am I, 2016. And uh, so we right away started pulling everybody around the table saying, okay, what do we need to do? Because this is going to be huge. We've got the business plan done. It showed, and we were going with, as we were trying to bring the numbers down as much as we can because we wanted it to be as real as we possibly could. And we're probably looking at just in Ashcroft, Cash Creek alone, is going to be eight to nine million dollars injected just in those two communities once this is opened up. We are having our soft opening and, you know, we all know in the business of CED, we're going to have those that say there's no way this is going to happen. So we were having our soft opening on June 21st, um, this next month, and that's National Indigenous Day. I think that well represents the area and what, um, what our mandate and goals are. So I'm hoping you can maybe show up and um, have a look because it's, it's going to be quite incredible. We've got a couple of Indigenous youth that will be working on the site, so we've got some funding for that also. I need to say Heritage Branch has been extremely supportive uh, with Community Futures and part of that I believe is we have demonstrated that we follow through on contracts, we follow through on reports and when we set our goals, we meet our goals. And so those are the kind of uh, partnerships that are looking for our communities. And once again, the big thing we have is we're not profit. So, you know, I work with the board and the board decides, you know, what are what are our priorities, and um, they let me know. That's my job to follow through with this. I do want to say, though, before I wrap up, one of the things uh, we are going to be implementing in HOPE through the Wildfire Transition Project, what we did was at the very beginning, we hired some uh, business investors. For our region as Sun Country, we had three business investors, and what their role was was to go to the businesses, help them with applications, whether it be Red Cross, help them with other support, because agriculture, there's a lot of money, and a lot of money in tourism. But we, we realized very quickly that businesses just did not have the strength to complete applications online. I'm still dealing today. Uh, there's still a lot of challenges. People still are still recovering, not only financially, but mentally. And this is going to be at least another three years. At least another three years that we'll be working on this. So uh, as a team, we met down here and we actually <coughs> had our strategic planning and hope this year. So we came down and one of the things that we talked about was the business ambassador program is doing so well. One of the things that really bothered me was hope was not included. So the board has agreed that we put some money in the budget for January to March of 2020, 
we're going to hire a business ambassador in Hope to sit down with businesses, maybe help them with whatever challenges they're having, maybe through applications, those kind of things, and helping them through that process. And I just want to remind everybody, by the way, all of our services are free. We don't charge for any kind of services that we have. Because that's part of, you know, the mandate is why would we go to a business and say, I want to help you, but it's going to be 100 bucks. Well, that's just not making a lot of sense. So, uh, yeah, so that is uh, something that we're going to be implementing, which I'm really proud of the board for agreeing to do, do that because they, they we, we look at it as a region. We want to ensure that all of our communities are included. And so we now pulled Hope in to provide that service. So that'll be happening in January. And the reason it's not happening until January is because if we're wrapping up this wildfire, this project that's been going on for a while. We're wrapping that up December 31st of this year. That's not to say we haven't started advocating for some more, but that right now the existing contract is going to be done there. So that just kind of gives you a little bit. I've uh, put in an operation plan to give you an idea. Some of the other work that we do, I can go on and on because it's just a most fabulous program that I've ever seen. I've had an opportunity to work with a number of uh, different organizations all across Canada. And this is by far, by far, one of the best programs there is, and I think that's why we have the support of the federal government. And, and I just need to add, thank you so much for the plugging out there. I just bought a hybrid two weeks ago. And I was so impressed because I went and did the pop-up shop over at the cafe, and I was all charged up in two hours. So thank you, because for visitors, that's a big thing. I'm going to be telling all my friends now. So that's awesome. That you walk around, you have coffee, you have lunch, and you're good to go. So thank you so much, once again, for allowing me to share some of the work that we're doing. Um, if you ever have any questions, I think my card is in there. Don't ever hesitate to give me a call. Drop me an email. I'd be happy to address any questions you might have. Thank you for the presentation, Deb. As you know, on either side of me here, uh, I've got lots of two consultants as far as those when it comes to community futures. So are there any other questions before I turn it over to Councillor Smith? It's all yours. Uh, half of myself and Councillor Medlock there. The McAbee project had, had some hurdles along the way, but Deb turns them into speed bumps, so it just takes a little longer, but we're going to get there pretty quick. She's uh, pretty relentless, so this was a great program, and we're really proud of what she's done for the area and everything else. So she's uh, a very, very sincere person, and she made a difference in a lot of people's lives, so we thank you. Yeah, I'd like to echo that. I mean, <clears throat> Deb's been with the organization for a long time. <laughs> Uh, and uh, I've been with the, on the board for uh, maybe a total of 11 or 12 years or something now and um, had the opportunity to be board chair for a while so I got to work a lot closer with Deb and um, such a huge champion of not only Hope but the entire region so uh, yeah, you do an excellent job and I'm glad you're always thinking about Hope and how we can improve down here so thank you. Thank you Deb, looking forward to seeing you again in our community. Great, well enjoy the rest of your meeting. I'm going to sneak out now. All right. <laughs> Our next delegation tonight is uh, Mr. Uh, Lindsay Carswell, uh, who's going to speak to us tonight about the ride to cancer. Ride to conquer okay. cancer. That's, thank you, Lindsay. For <coughs> thank you very much. Um, I uh, have grown quite an affection for uh, Hope, and I uh, was reminded of it during the ride up, drive up here to the valley and into the canyon. It's a uh, gorgeous uh, part of the country. It's a gem that I think we're going to. Um, uh, what we share with uh, a lot of people uh, this coming um, August. Um, before I get, uh, well, what I'm going to do today, um, because uh, for some uh, this uh, program is new, I'm going to introduce it, uh, and I'll provide some updates, uh, and then I'll offer an opportunity to discuss uh, what the Ride to Conquer Cancer is. Um, so, um, as you can see here, the number uh, one fundraiser, not just the number one cycling fundraising event, but the number one cancer fundraising event, but it's uh, the number one annual fundraising event in British Columbia. Um, looking at the amount of money raised, um, validates that $10.6 million uh, dollars raised last year in 2018, and an incredible $96 million raised over uh, the past 10 years. And um, it is all done by, uh, you know, between 2,300 to 2,500 riders, hundreds of crew, uh, and then along with that come family, friends, and uh, supporters, um, and, and uh, up to 60,000 uh, donors uh, who support these riders when they are asking for, um, for donations.
calculations. All right, so <clears throat> what is the ride? It's 200 kilometers over uh, two days, and <clears throat> it's been around now for 10 years, as I mentioned, but for, um, the first nine, uh, we rode from Cloverdale to Seattle. Um, and and uh, heading into 2018, we made the strategic uh, decision uh, to move <clears throat> in BC and we built a challenging two-day uh, route from Cloverdale to Hope. <clears throat> of course, we didn't make it. Uh, <clears throat> we um, uh, countered the, pardon me with my, my voice too, <clears throat> but um, I'll get you some water. Thanks, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> All right. The Mount Hicks um, wildfire um, got in the way. Uh, and it forced us to default to a contingency plan. We saw us ride the second day, um, you know, from Chilliwack and loop around and, and, and return to Chilliwack. Um, but uh, we're we're set on hope. Uh, hope represents a, a, a challenge. Thank you very much. All right. Don't worry about it. Um, which is what the ride to conquer cancer is all about. It's it's a, it's a challenge. Um, <clears throat> it's unique uh, and it's uh, symbolic um, to all have our wheels pointed in the same direction um, towards hope is a powerful message and, uh, and it resonates with our riders that are truly embracing it. And so uh, the, the weekend is set for August 24 and 25 this year. <clears throat> and uh, provide some updates. Um, uh, the response uh, to the all BC route, uh, by all accounts, has been very positive. <clears throat> Registrations last year, the number of participants were, were at the highest level we'd seen since 2012. Um, volunteers and crew, uh, it remains a, a, a major task to, to recruit 400 to 500 volunteers, but it's been made easier um, with us uh, staying within the province. Um, the corporate sponsors, um, we're seeing a lot more getting involved, and with that comes a lot more financial support and engagement. Uh, since the move, we've seen RBC, for example, uh, come on in a major way, and um, they encourage their employees at branches that are located throughout the route to come out and cheer. Um, we've also brought on a wine sponsor from Summerhill Pyramid Winery, so just the obstacle of getting, or the hurdle of getting wine across the border is no longer there. Um, and. Uh, of course, last year we had Cal Tire uh, involved, and that was uh, largely um, because of some efforts that were made from uh, Kathy Harry locally. And, uh, and now they've since built a corporate team, and, uh, and we'll see uh, a few dozen uh, coming down from Vernon uh, to participate in the, in the ride with uh, Kathy and her husband as well, um, and I think her uh, son-in-law. Um, <coughs> We, uh, I also um, want to emphasize an appreciation for the community engagement. Right from day one, um, the initial phone call went to uh, um, Tammy at, at Advantage Hope. It's been a great working relationship with Advantage Hope and with the district. Um, thank you for your commitment and your support uh, to help me get um, uh, what, what, you know, get the potential that it's got. Um, <clears throat> in terms of the local community too, um, this is a real noteworthy uh, piece. There were 15 riders from Hope who signed up and participated last year. Um, 14 uh, this year. Um, I think about eight are back for a second time. Uh, and um, from a fundraising standpoint, because <coughs> we have the ability with, with database to run reports, and I thought this would be an interesting one to look, like, look at, a bit of a case study, if you will. Um, in 2016, if you totaled all the donation money that came into the BC Cancer Foundation um, from Residents of Hope, uh, it came to $4,000. Um, and in, uh, then we introduced the Ride to Conquer Cancer, um, and of course with the pre-promotion and, and a lot of the preliminary work, it, we were a year ahead. Uh, so um, it, it actually um, produced some uh, results in 2017, even though the ride wasn't to take place until the end of the summer the following year, up to 6000 And then in 2018, a uh, full $58,000 uh, came from Hope to the BC Cancer Foundation. So you're a community of giving, and uh, you saw basically a 14 fold increase in uh, donations to a cause that affects a lot of people around British Columbia. <clears throat> I did another little punch that into the population for per capita, and it's almost 10. That includes all children and people of all ages. So. 
All right, <clears throat> what's going to be happening on um, August 25th, so the Sunday, uh, this is when riders will be leaving Chilliwack Heritage Park for a 100 kilometer um, uh, day, and, uh, and they cross over into Ag Sea and into, um, uh, Harrison? Uh, towards Harrison, um, just lost track of First Nation, uh, Seabird Nation, uh, around there, some beautiful stretches along the side of the river, um, then back onto Highway 7 um, for that stretch, and then onto the one <coughs> from around and into town, and, uh, and just make sure we get some kilometers in and not disrupt too much of your uh, activity, we'll circumnavigate uh, Hope, but then come down Wallace, uh, looks like we'll enter on 7 and, and then turn left on 3, um, and then make our way to the next slide and into the um, recreation center for our finish. Uh, where there will be a lot of um, entertainment, there will be uh, a lot of noise, um, and uh, a lot of people, uh, and, um, and a lot of uh, celebration. Um, the first riders will be expected in around 10.30. The bulk of them will come, uh, those are the, the, the hammerheads, <laughs> um, <clears throat> the bulk will come probably between 11 and 2, um, uh, or sorry, 2 till 4. And then, and uh, the last rider probably in around five o'clock. <clears throat> so we, um, there are areas where uh, we can use your support and help. Um, one for sure will be in um, communication, and uh, so outreach to the community. Uh, we'll obviously draft a media advisory that will have a lot of uh, information that um, will be good to be shared through all of your channels. Um, for the most part, what we, we would like to encourage is that um, people uh, are aware of it and um, plan accordingly, um, obey traffic um, personnel, and, um, and, and then come out and cheer. Uh, come out and, and uh, get involved in, in something that um, is, uh, is, is quite a, an emotional experience and, um, and I think something that should provide hope with a lot of civic pride. Um, <clears throat> We do need some volunteers, and, uh, and so I will provide uh, contact information. I mean, basically, conquercancer.ca uh, is your, um, your vehicle to, to all information, but um, I've got lines of communication with staff. Um, <clears throat> everything from serving food, emptying garbage bins, organizing finish line crowds, um, set up and tear down activity. And um, lastly, we're here, we're here, and we want to be part of uh, of hope, We're, there's there's a legacy to be had. Um, one of our uh, uh, strong supporters, um, William McCarthy, last year uh, commissioned a chainsaw carving. It's done, and it's um, <clears throat> in the temperature control kind of storage environment right now. And we're eager um, to to unveil that. Um, and we've been toying with different approaches. Um, but what we've landed on is can. <clears throat> to bring it out um, during this year's Chainsaw Carving Festival, which is a week prior. Um, and if we could display it, um, and then work on moving it um, by that, that following weekend uh, into place at the Recreation Center um, for, for all of our <clears throat> um, riders and supporters to, uh, to take in um, and maybe get some selfies with, uh, and then move it into a, a, a permanent location. Um, that I'm keen to work with you on um, because uh, I really think that um, it's, it's going to uh, be quite a, a marker um, for, for years to come. And, and, uh, and, and I see us definitely, um, I, I'm talking in terms of decades now, uh, I think I'm looking ahead to definitely the next 10 years um, for this ride to, to um, finish in hope. And uh, to that end, <clears throat> I don't, I don't like it. things can change, but we're focusing on that last, that final um, weekend before Labor Day, uh, which would mean August 29 and 30 uh, in 2020. There we go. <clears throat> Thank you for your presentation, Mr. Carswell. Uh, we the community is already talking about this and looking forward to it. They were disappointed last year that the route had to be changed, but. Uh, I think we'll be good this year. Won't be a problem. Any uh, questions for our guests? Yeah, are you going to order sunny weather this year? It's <laughs> counting on you to help me out there. <laughs> no small. If you could, uh, if there's no questions for Mr. Carswell, uh, Mr. Fordlowski, could you come up?
I believe you had a question about yourself. Uh huh. Oh, no. ceremonies? No, no. No, I'm not right. Come on. Come on. We can do it as a cycle. We can no. start and trade all kinds of We're one member. Can you join, can join John up front for more questions? Uh, Councillor Erickson, could you join John up front? I'd like to invite uh, Councillor Erickson and uh, Donna Bellingham up. You're aware that we all rode last year yeah. uh, for a whole team. And it was the ride to try. We tried to get yes. there, but we couldn't. So basically, we got together. We're going to make this a presentation to the district. It's going to hang in the rec center where most people can see it. And you donated a jersey, uh, which is the 10th anniversary jersey. And this was our team jersey. We'll hold it up. And uh, it does have a bit of a narrative to it. The ride to try. Maybe Councilor Medlock, you're, you're a camera guru. Would you like to take a picture of oh, your phone? Can you sell this one? And it was a miserable weekend. Last year. Did you say measure? Measure. Here? Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, I want to do the cruiser though. Yeah. Yeah. One, one speed of each cruiser. That looks great. For the big scene. Should have been just more than 50 bucks. The big scene. You can just do the shit in our owl with all the electric assist. Mr. Carswell, before you go, the, the town will supply the base for your, your car. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Okay. Once it's decided where and what you want to do, I'll working work with the staff and, and the, the committee, we'll make it happen. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. <clears throat> Moving on, uh, forward to Mr. Fortalowski, please, for staff reports. Mr. Mayor, Council, Advantage Hope is building its, uh, its strength and its board and have come forward with two more nominations tonight. Uh, they are uh, Ms. Uh, Nicole Blanworth and Ms. Lynn Margell, both of which are in the audience, and if I could introduce them briefly. We have Lynn here on the, on the right, and Nicole, who some of you, you may notice or recognize them anyway, Lynn's teacher at the school, and uh, Nicole is at the library, so local, local folks. As you're aware in the process, the Advantage Hope Board takes applications and vets them according to certain criteria, and what they feel they need is expertise in the board to move. The, uh, the purposes of advantage moving forward. Uh, they vetted both Nicole and uh, Lynn, and their uh, their vetting forms are attached behind for you, and I'm sure you've had a chance to look at these. So, in essence, uh, what we're asking for is that you endorse both Nicole Glenworth and Lynn Marvel as a question <coughs> of the advantage uh, board, and they're both here for any questions should you have any. Thank you, Mr. Korolowski. So the motion reads that Council endorse Nicole Glenworth and Lynn Marvell as appointees to the Advantage Hope Board. Moved. Second. Any discussion at all? All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. It's unanimous. Welcome aboard. <laughs> the fun begins. <laughs> no committee reports tonight. Mayor and Council report. I have my briefest report so far. Why, but I'm, I just do. I attend the Fraser Valley Regional District and Hospital Board meeting, and at this time I don't feel there's anything we need to report about our community. There's a lot discussed, but uh, nothing uh, to bring forward at this time. I, uh, I attended the 2019 ceremonial review of the Royal Westminster Regiment Cadet Corps of Hope. I really enjoyed that. I went along with uh, Mr. Fortolowski in his full uniform, and I presented an award. And uh, it's, a young, it's a young, small group. It's 25 members, but uh, they're hoping to increase to a, to a larger group next year. And they, of course, they marched, and they all got presented with their different uh, awards for the year. It was uh, well attended by family and friends, so it was a good program to participate in. Uh, the Hope, and Health, Hope Health and Well-Being Steering Committee, uh, we did our went over the quarter reports of those that had been granted funds and we looked at grant submissions for this coming period so there's nothing to report other than uh, there's not much money left for this fiscal year but there's more coming so 
And when I find out that when the, when the current applicant winners are notified, I will bring it to the council and let you know. But I, I can't at this time. And that's the end of my report. Councilor Tron, please. Thank you. On uh, May 22nd, I attended the Chamber of Commerce meeting. Um, just some notes I took from the meeting was uh, they're showing an increase in calls for new memberships. Um, they're making good progress on the two sides that are being installed, I think on Highway 3 and Highway 1. Uh, continue to promote sell signage advertising on the sides. Um, they were saying it's showing quite a positive feedback from the Facebook post, whether it be profiling separate businesses in town. Um, they're also very close to finalizing a purchase on the Christmas lights for the downtown court. Okay. Just in a search for uh, volunteers as well as a place to string all the lights as well. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you. How's your story? Yes, um, I attended the Gold Majors meeting. Um, and we had a presentation that day by Ann Todd. Um, she talked about the participation action raise money for your community thing and she's very engaging and exciting and I could see everybody was really excited. So it's so simple if you have a smartphone or a, like a phone just download the app for participation. I'm in. You're in? I'm Anybody in. else in? Yeah, my app. Let's get in. Sorry. Uh, so, do you know how? No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go happy. So here's the thing. Here's well, the thing. This is, a, this is a competition and it's uh, between uh, the communities of like size, uh, Alberta and British Columbia, and what we're doing is we are looking to get the community as engaged as we can, better than anyone else, and you do that by doing the app on your phone and tracking any activities that you do. So you could be walking, you could be house cleaning, you could be gardening, you could be preparing for a ride to conquer cancer, you could be doing whatever, walk Richmond Hill once or twice, there's a good one. And um, so, Everybody just sign up. It's May 31st to June 15th. On June 16th, there will be a walk that's organized, and that is Father's Day. So bring your family out or have them bring you. And do the walk to support our community in getting into action and being popular. So I know I didn't do that very good justice, but Anne did a wonderful presentation. They're also um, going to do a survey amongst the um, Golden Age group, uh, senior citizen group. You don't have to be a Golden Age um, to look at food securities and affordability and how are seniors affected by the rising cost of food. And so that's very exciting as well. The meeting was excellent. We had um, a couple of questions come up. Uh, one of the uh, questions, and I'm not sure how we can help with this, is that on uh, Fraser Avenue and some places on Wallace Street, people are doing these gooey terms? G terms. Yeah, and so you're pulling out of the um, post office, backing out, and someone backs up beside you, and then all of a sudden whips around and parks by the fields. And this, they feel, is very dangerous. They would like to see some kind of a solution. Um, they understand that it is a wide road and that it's probably, you know, uh, difficult to address, but they'd like to see uh, some way of addressing that issue. Um, and that's, that was, I believe, everything. That was the prominent one. Oh, recycling. Um, they had a question about light bulbs and batteries, and I did not know the answer. So I'm going to brush up on my recycling skills. Um, and otherwise, they were very good. Excellent meeting. Had a good time. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Do you want to tell everyone how much the community could win? $150,000. And... Uh, <laughs> That's excellent. It's so exciting. But even more exciting, so you started something here, is that we get active and we start to move. And when you're moving, you don't stiffen up and, and it keeps all of the, the wonderful parts of us moving and engaged. So, $150,000. Thank you for your report. Councillor Smith. I have a question. Oh, oh yes. Participation. You get you, on an app on your phone? Mm -hmm. And there's a GPS you all day? How do you, how do you know? No, they want you to manually put it in, They're or you can, you. if you have a Fitbit, you can connect with your Fitbit. So if you arrive from here to Chilliwack and back, what is that? How do you do that? You just put it in the app? Put it in the app, and you swipe something. And that's free to download. Yep. And if the app is, is not in your line of things that you do, 
uh, the rec center will help you fill out the form and fill in your hours. Uh, community some little work on the uh, the Anglican Church there for their help put in the garden for the uh, cremation for ashes and the plaques will go inside for people who can afford it. We're very fortunate that on June 4th the Archbishop will come in here to bless the garden and that. It's a very good program for people and we're glad to be part of it. Uh, same as uh, Councilor Tron there as a Chamber of Commerce and uh, you see there's a sign outside about the farmer's market. There, Chamber is good about that. Moving on to that, we want to put a make some sandwich signs to go to restaurants and different things telling about the market downtown, and also a map we can do at the info center, and then on the back map because we can use the church over here. So you know, utilizing more of the town, it's going to be a good thing for everybody involved. Uh, also, John Mace and I at the Community of Bloom, we went to Chilliwack and with Proben. They have uh, given us uh, enough wood for the main carvings for the chainsaw carving, which is always an issue with getting good cedar. We still need smaller pieces, but that's a huge help for us, I can tell you. So, And Proven is actually so people know what the community for us, so it's uh, very good with us working with us. Uh, the library happens, happenings in that. Uh, so Nicole's here, of course, who's part of the happenings. Uh, so we're working towards getting our membership up to 4,000. So remember anybody who coming to town, make sure they get their butt down to the library and sign up. Very important for us to get there. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Councilor Medlock. Oh, all right. On the 22nd, last Wednesday, I, I went to the FBRD meeting with Mayor Rob and was finally sworn in as his alternate. So sat in on that meeting and it was really interesting. It's like a room four times the size of this, but they have 22 people sitting around that table, so a lot on the go. Um, but yeah, that was a, a good meeting, so I'm glad that that's kind of taking place. Um, I just wanted to comment on the Chamber of Commerce's uh, Facebook promos. I had uh, Lonnie Warren call me today yes. at my <coughs> place of employment and, and try to set up a time to come do that with the photo on the door and here's the staff. And um, I think that's been a really effective thing on social media for the chamber to do, and I think it's probably one of the best things they've done in a long, long time. And um, my business isn't even a member, and I was happy to hear that she's calling. And she says it doesn't matter if you're a member or not; you're a future member, and that's how we look at it. And I'm like, that is fantastic. So I was really pleased with that. A um, couple other quick things. Um, I'll let Dusty talk about uh, some of the advantage hope stuff, but. Um, you might have noticed there's all sorts of signs that have finally gone up in those uh, structures in the community. So, uh, like there's one by the, the old Rambo Bridge site, there's at the bike park, there's at the top of the sports pool. Uh, I think there's already one at the skate park, but it's the same sort of thing, the golf course, along the walking trails. So those were all uh, paid for by the Rural Dividend Fund, and uh, I just think that, you know, that's one great thing that Advantage Hope has certainly done, with a lot of help from, um, well, Ali Harwood did the design on, on, the, on the storyboards, and Stephanie Hooker, and Pathway Partners, and Cold Mountain Center. So those names all definitely need to get mentioned. Um, there's the Kettle Valley Rail Markers. There's one underneath the, the, the Fraser Bridge that talks about it, uh, plus the markers along the route. So it's kind of fun. So for participation, get out there, walk around, and see those signs. <laughs> follow the route. Um, yeah, I've been getting out and looking at them, and they're, they're, they're really something. Even Councillor Smith is highlighted in the one at the Morris Force Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't walking though, I was jumping something. He was jumping. I don't know if that was the one that was going to But that's all I have to work. Thank you. Councillor Eric. Sure. So um, I also attended the Chamber of Commerce meeting, and so I'm not going to repeat what Councillor Tron and Dr. Smith said. So, but the Facebook, the report on the Facebook success. Everybody that's been on the Facebook success um, has been Facebook. Every business has seen an uptake in their business, and it's been quite remarkable. So she's doing, I think, one to two a week, and so it's um, something the chamber has taken on, and it's been been quite remarkable. I also had the privilege of touring Park Street Manor. Now, that's a very old building, and I think the district. Hope should really um, support as much as we can. They really need to have a new front entrance and a new, or some type of an elevator to get people in and out of that. It's quite a long stairway up and down. And the facility is quite old and it really needs an update. So I think if they're playing, applying for grants, I think we as a district should really support the facility. I was. Uh, 
good shot with the meat that's over there. And I know John's doing a good job of managing it. It's almost full now, which is really good. And so um, they're actually breaking up, which is a good thing. Um, another thing I, at the Chamber of Commerce meeting, I brought up what the Chamber thought of the east entrance with all that logging and no cleanup. And they were very supportive of me to bring it to council saying that something should be done, we should look into that to get that cleaned up. I noticed in Silver Creek, someone logged at Silver Creek, and that's nicely cleaned up all on a pile. It's tourism season, we really need to talk to these people and get something over there and get that cleaned up really soon. Um, anyway, I just think we should you know, maybe stick a little fire underneath them and say we've got to get this done. The staff has talked to the owner uh, recently. And so, are they going to do it next week or two? Or yes. Or yeah. yeah. Well, they've been, they've been asked to do that, so yeah. we'll follow up if they have. Thanks. <coughs> yeah, that's all my report. <coughs> all right. So, attended the Advantage Hope uh, board meeting on May 14th. Um, some of the highlights from the report. Um, for the April 2019, 3,109 visitors and 46 buses uh, visited the, uh, the information center. That's quite a bit. That's 103 on average a day that sit there and come come to that uh, facility. Maybe just using the washroom, but it's one of the, one of those 3,000 people might decide to move here because they see how beautiful it is. So I think that's good. Um, another exciting thing: they applied for Canada Summer Jobs. Uh, they got five positions out of it. Three students will be 75 percent coverage of wages for 30 hours a week. And then there's two new positions up through the Canada Summer Jobs that will be ages 15 and nine, or 15 to 29 that are 100% coverage of wages for 30 hours per week. So a lot of the stuff that they'll do with them is do like the walks down to the tunnels, uh, use them for data collection, um, certain things like that. So I think that's a great show of leveraging of funds to get some people in for applying for these things that maybe the district would not have been able to get. So um, also. MRDT is in the Ministry of Finance for, for review. Um, if everything goes as planned, funds could start coming in for October. Uh, and then as they go pr process, it'll be a monthly fund once it's set up. Uh, also, another announcement they had was the outdoor show in October, I believe it is. They'll be sitting with the Fraser Valley Group, so it's another group. They'll have more footprint for the whole being you know, as part of the top end of the Fraser Valley, so for them to uh, last year they're outside of the Fraser Valley Group. This year they'll be within the Fraser Valley Group. So we got Mission, Abbotsford, Chilliwack, Agassiz, Kent Harrison. Mm -hmm. So that big footprint showing that our area is a place that you want to come and travel to. So I think that's a good place and we're not segregated from them. I think that's a great thing that the group's working with. Um, and then just one other thing, I did send an email to John this afternoon, it was late, but we had had a couple contractors contact me as well for the new for the dumping of the, there's new regulations due to uh, asbestos being in the drywall. So I think there's something that we need to do with the province, or lobby on the province somewhere down the way to find a way, a solution that we can get a bin or something to figure out this is the problem. Because if contractors cannot dump drywall and they don't know what year it was put in there, we're going to have people dumping in the bush. So this, is, this isn't a problem that the town has created, it's a problem that the province has created due to the new regulations, and maybe federally too. So um, I think it's something we need to address and have some sort of solution, or talks with them even. Uh, maybe something that comes up at UBCM too. So that's all I have to report. Thank you for your report, Pastor Leno. I just took a uh, look at my book and I noted one more thing here. That, um, I think most of us on council probably got a phone call from Hilbert Corbett and he had some concerns about the Rupert Street boat launch. Um, one of them I think has already been addressed, but one uh, is a good valid one he's got uh, a large frontage on Rupert Street there with several gates. He says that um, a lot of times boats and trailers come and park along his property line and he has no access to his property. So I was hoping that um, staff could take a look at that and at least post some signage with uh, you know no parking um, in front of those gates. Uh, that would make his life a lot better and um, I think that's only fair. I mean, he definitely should have access to his property where there's gates. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Council. Well, it sounds like another busy week. Um, permits and bylaws. Over to Director of Community Development. Thank you. Uh, your Worship, 
for you. Um, 66597 Cockle Lake Road. Um, there's a geotechnical hazard and flood erosion hazard dump permit that's come before you. Uh, it's in order to add a new 15 foot by 11 foot master bedroom and a 33 foot by 11 foot covered deck with a outdoor kitchen along the west side, the lake side of the uh, existing dwelling. Thank you. So the uh, permit that's been agreed that a geo technical hazard development permit and a flood erosion hazard development permit be approved for the property at 66597 Cockle Lake Road for the addition of the master bedroom and covered deck subject to the district of Hope receiving a satisfactory certified report from a qualified professional confirming site specific safe building details and further that the director of community development be authorized to endorse the geotechnical hazard and flood erosion hazards development permit and required covenant documents. And further, that for purposes of the development permit validity period, the conditions of the development permit shall expire on May 27, 2021. And further, that for purposes of Section 504 of the Local Government Act, substantially start any construction shall mean the placement of the foundation for the master bedroom and covered deck as certified safe by a qualified professional. Move it. I'll move the recommendation. Second, any discussion? All those in favor? Those carried. Thank you. The next one, Mr. Gell, please. Uh, for those returning members of council, as you recall, on February 27, 2017, council had approved the issuance of the required development permits for uh, the purpose of a highway-oriented uh, service commercial development with a gas station, convenience store, and a fast food restaurant, patio, and drive through. Um, the application, unfortunately, uh, due to lengthy consultation between the applicant and an external agency, uh, got held up, and the two-year time limit expired uh, for the previous development permit, and therefore, uh, the applicant has reapplied for this development. Well, that's good to hear, so moving forward, the flood and erosion hazard development permit and geotechnical hazards development permit and a rail and highway service corridor form and character development permit for the property at 61625 Trans Canada Highway be prepared to support a highway commercial development consisting of a service station, restaurant, and associated amenities. And further, that the Director of Community Development be authorized to approve minor changes to the rail and highway service corridor form and character development permit. And further, that for purposes of the development permit validity period, the conditions of the development permit shall expire on May 27, 2021. And further, that for purposes of Section 504 of the Local Government Act, substantially start any construction shall mean the completion of an approved foundation for any of the proposed structures as certified safe by a qualified professional. And further, that upon receiving the certified reports from a qualified professional conferring site specific safe building sites for the development, authorize the Director of Community Development to endorse the development permits and required covenant documents. Uh, mover? I'll move it. Yes, move. Second, thank you. And uh, Councillor Erickson. To you, uh, Mr. Gill. Um, that area is quite low. Do, is there going to be a requirement he's going to have to raise it before he puts anything? Uh, Your Worship, do you? Um, I have just received a flood erosion geotechnical report from the qualified professional. There would be the requirement of the uh, flood construction level that's identified in the freezing river flood for, for that area. So that'll be part of this? Yeah. That is correct. Thank you. Any, any other questions, Council? Call the question. All those in favor? All those carry. Thank you. Down to Next one, uh, Mr. Gill, you want to speak to this one briefly? Your Worship, through you, uh, 710 3rd Avenue has an accessory guess, garage and carport structure to the rear of the property which faces park. Um, the applicant would like to change the roof uh, with a structure or engineered truss system. Um, however, 40% uh, of the structure sits in the setback. In order for them to uh, 
there to be a legal remedy in the situation, they require this development variance permit, and therefore they can then build. Okay. Good. Thank you. So the council approved the presentation of a development variance permit in order to relax the northern exterior side yard setback from 3.5 meters to 0.38 meters in order to replace and change the existing roof design and supporting component. For the existing accessory garage on the property legally at 710 Third Avenue. And further, that section 5.8b, citing exemptions as provided in zoning bylaw 1324, to allow for the roof overhang on the accessory garage be reduced from 1.5 meters to 0.3 meters. And further, that in accordance with the District of Hope Development Procedures bylaw, the Local Government Act and the Community Charter authorize staff to issue a notice of intent to consider the approval the development variance permit for a neighbor, neighboring property owners. Moved, second, all those in favor? Oh, sorry, question? Yes. So is this, as I looked at the property, it looks like the roof is almost going to be on the back alley structure, because it's only under a foot off, and we're going to we're going to leave it that way because we're going to grandfather. It's been grandfathered. Um, it should have been there for 100 years, and we're just going to leave it that way. Your Worship, for you, um, the, there is a certain level of grandfathering that does occur um, with this application. Um, there's two ways of sort of dealing with it, either through a board variance or a development variance permit. And once again, um, for the rear lot or the actual uh, laneway there, um, it still meets the setback requirement um, of the bylaw, which is about three feet a meter. Um, but in order to sort of legally give them the ability, this variance permit is required. Thank you. Any other questions? Councillor Smith? Yeah, so this house here is actually a fairly old house, and they've done a remarkable job, you know, of, of bringing it up. And it's uh, a lot of people, could, if they did that good with their house and their yards, they would be pretty happy with it. They're very good at it. So. Good point. Yeah. Okay. okay. All those in favor? All those carried? Down to the next one. This is what we discussed earlier. Mr. Gilliam, did you comment on this? I don't think. So I'll move forward that uh, this is the District of Hope Zoning Amendment Bylaw number 1457 2019 that we just heard in our public meeting. The motion is that the District of Hope Zoning Amendment Bylaw Number 1457-2019 be given third reading in order to rezone the property at 648 Little Street from single-family residential RS1 to two-family residential. Okay. Thank you. We'll come and get you when we're finished. I'll move. We'll have discussion. I'll have discussion. Absolutely. Move from the seconder. Second. And let's have some discussion. Yeah, sure. If this development or application is denied, what measures are in place for the district to make sure that there isn't secondary dwelling in there? I, I know we have legal rentals in town already currently. So what measures, if this proponent says, okay, well, it didn't get accepted, I'm still going to build it, what measures are in place for the district to Ensure that doesn't happen. Uh, enforce them. Technically, it, it becomes a matter of it, it's illegal. Yeah. At that point, there's then it once again it will reach into the, the stream of bylaw enforcement. Right. We got a complaint against it. Okay. No, that's good. Councillors. So as I sat back and listened to the comments pro and con, it looked like the majority of con was because of the renter not the principal cause. And I think that's, that's what's concerning me. If they had a good renter in there, we would have probably not much discussion. But because of the renter who is currently in there bringing debris in and cars and noise and marijuana smoke and whatever. So I think, for myself, I have to go by principle in this case. If they had a good renter, probably they wouldn't even be a comment about it. Because one extra or one or two extra people living in that area would not crowd the streets, in my opinion. But because of the renters, the existing renter has caused some problem. I think that's why 
we had these comments and most of the letters were written concerning it. So that's my problem. So I think because of the principle, I'm going to vote for it. But uh, maybe we just have to change the render. Councilor Smith? Yeah, um, kind of echo Councilor Erickson's things too. Um, maybe there's an opportunity if this the application goes through that another renter downstairs encourages that renter upstairs to upkeep their prop place better because now there's more people living in that dwelling. Maybe there's that opportunity that these people live now, or there's people living underneath them, maybe won't, uh, won't be living in the circumstances that they're living in now, as this renter is obviously not sought after within, the, within that community. I do believe we are voting or looking at this as the proponent, not the renters. Um, and our, 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 our IOCP supports this. Um, the proponent that's applying for it is living within the community. He's been a part of the community for many things, like brigade days and stuff like that. So I don't think he's an absentee landlord. Um, and, the, and the true statement is, the com it, there was a lot of people that said, this is how this community, or this uh, that area has always been. That doesn't mean that area can't change. And I think there's an opportunity to see if this will work in that um, area or not. Um, we can get feedback on it after, if this goes through or don't, doesn't get through, I guess. But uh, I am in support of it because of the, the proponent is doing it, not because of the renter. I'm not speaking, I don't want to vote because of the renter. I think uh, if there's a renter issue, then bylaw has to get involved in it. People have to complain and set their, set, put the story straight to the town, put their letter and face to it and complain about the renter. But I don't think the proponent and the process that we're going through is the wrong way. I think this is, I support it because it's right. It's somebody coming to the table instead of doing it illegally, they're doing it the proper way, which does support our OCP and it is also um, better. I believe it would up some property, I would assume too. So that's, I will be in support of this. Thank you for your comments. <coughs> Councilor Stewart and Councilor Eric. So, okay, I listened to what was being said during the public hearing as well, and I understand that there's apprehension. People who've lived in an area for a really long time um, don't want their communities to change. They're comfortable. Um, and I also support densification and the IOCP's um, goals and objectives. Um, my concern, and I'm not really at the decision point, I hope we have a little more discussion, is that um, I wonder if sometimes, you know, when we spot zone, if maybe there should be areas that are more senior centered and um, maybe try to bring this type of zoning into more of a, a compounded area than here, there, and everywhere. Um, as far as the, the issues with the renters, that needs to be addressed. And I believe that the proponent today heard that there is definitely a need to address the activities happening in that rental dwelling, and I trust that that's going to happen. Um, so I'm still, I hope we can have some more discussion. I love the idea of the secondary suite and um, creating more rentals in our community. I'm just not quite sure that this is the, the block or area for that. So if somebody can help me out. Yeah, thanks for your comments. Councillor Erickson? Yes, coming back to this again. So number one, I looked at the lot size, and the lot size is quite a good lot size. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than the lots on either side, it looks like. And uh, so it's, a parking is not a problem as I see it, and an extra body or two I don't think is a problem. Uh, another thing is if you could have a real bad renter in the neighboring house that sits out on their patio and makes all the same noise in a single family dwelling, which would be the same problem. So I'm really looking at this on the principle of the OCP and the principle of densification in, in hope, not not on one one renter causing some trouble in the community. Councillor Medlock and then Councillor Smith at the end there, please. Thank you. Um, I, I just sort of I wrote every bunch of notes from everybody that spoke and I just want to ask some questions and highlight on some of the comments. Um, so question through to staff um, is about the vehicle parking. So is there any uh, additional parking required in the RT1 zone, uh, the RS1? Your Worship, through you, yes, there would be. Um, we believe the site would be adequate enough to sort of support that additional parking. Okay. Um, 
and I just wanted to make some comments. So uh, it is very subjective as to people's thoughts as to what happens in the neighborhood. We had some people that stood up in support of it that said it is already an existing rental home and that they don't see an increase in traffic. And then we had other people that have said that since it's, uh, uh, since, since they purchased the home, they've seen an increase in traffic, but I believe it was already an existing rental home. So I, I, you know, you gotta sort of take it all. Everybody sees a, something differently as they look at it. Um, I'm definitely more uh, along the lines of Councillor Erickson with looking at it from a community good perspective. Um, not necessarily who the owner is and whether or not he's a good landlord and whether or not the tenants are good or bad, but whether or not it's needed for the community as a whole uh, and does it support our goals and objectives that are laid out in the IOCP. Um, and, you know, uh, there was one comment that was made about workforce housing, and that certainly is an issue. And uh, we've had a little bit of discussion on other things, you know, even with the Airbnbs and things like that, where they take away from the rental vacancy. So uh, I do support. Uh, opportunities to increase the rental stock in the community. Um, I certainly applaud the homeowners to going through the process of doing it the correct way because we all know there are several homes in the community that don't go through this process, they don't meet BC building code, so they're technically, in my opinion, unsafe uh, and they're, they're not zoned correctly and they're certainly not uh, paying their fair share of uh, taxes and utilities and all those sort of things where this type of zoning would take care of all of those. So uh, I'm definitely leaning more towards supporting this application um, due to the principle and, and I agree with Councillor Stu in that I think that the current landlord uh, has heard some concerns and I, I hope that they will act on those. Um, I think those are issues that can be addressed with any type of property. There are other homes on that street that I know for a fact are single family but they're still rental homes, so you can get a renter in any type of situation that's good or bad. Um, so, so it's again based on the principle of the communities and the need in the community. Uh, I do take into account the concerns from the neighbors, for sure though. So that's why I have to say. Thank you. Back to Councillor mm -hmm. Smith. Yeah, just a quick comment. I, I actually pick up my, been picking up where it is here now. Uh, I pick up a daughter from daycare. She goes to daycare there. So the increased traffic could become because of the home business too. Um, people picking up their daughter or children at certain times and dropping them off at certain times. So the increased traffic could be coming from that part of it too, not has anything to do with the renters. Um, and then to, to comment on Councillor Stewen's comment about spot zoning, um, I think this may be a step to net, not be a spot zone, but maybe an opportunity for now this person gets the application either approved or disapproved. But if it gets approved, then now does that open up an opportunity for other people to think about this? Now it's not a spot zone. Now we've incorporated this community into it too. But somebody has to start somewhere. I don't look at it as a spot zone. I think it's somebody putting the brick in and maybe somebody else will look at this doing, doing this down the road. So I don't look at it as a spot zone. It kind of seems that way just because it's the one and only in there, but maybe people haven't thought outside the box or are doing it illegally. So that's the way I look at it. My other counselor, Smith. So I was part of the OCP plan and it was very interesting. And we do need more rentals than everything else. But sometimes when you get people in rentals, you can't get rid of them. It's a very big process. We had one on Allison Street. You know, we got rid of in five years when it burned down, but that's kind of an interesting way. You know, everybody who came to council repeatedly was all those people. So if they just thought, if they took care of the rental thing and then reapplied, you know, cleaned it up and that to the standards. I lived, I lived for a short time through in Allison, and uh, they were okay with me, nobody complained. You know, so I think there's a, you know, an issue right there. So how do you how do you fix that? It could be a long term if they're in the rental trying to get them out. So. Right. Anyone else? Good discussion, um, council. I just want to okay. Yes, Councillor Stewart. Absolutely. I just want to thank everyone for the discussion, and um, and I believe that I can now feel very comfortable in supporting this rezoning application. I thank you for bringing forward that, yes, it is a spot zone for now, but it could become something different in the future. And um, I think that um, it is the direction that we need to go in the community to support our workforce housing and rentals. So I, I can, I'm comfortable to vote now. And to thank you for the conversation. Sorry, that was very So I guess this goes back to Mr. Fordlaw. 
Crosby. So if we do have a bad renter in there, and we get lots of complaints, does the bylaw enforcement go, or do you talk to the landlord, or how, how does that work? I would think this remains largely a matter between uh, the landlord and the tenant through the Landlord Tenant Act. We, of course, may be able to inform the tenancy branch as to public concerns regarding that property and hopefully inform a decision um, whether or not they can be, um, I guess, coached to adhere to norms or perhaps even evicted, et cetera, et cetera. But as a district, and uh, Ms. Billingham can confirm this, uh, we ourselves do not have the power to eject anyone from a private yeah. I can confirm that we have concern, at least one concern that I'm aware of come forward. We not only address it with the tenant, but we also address it with the property owner, because ultimately the property owner is responsible for what happens on the property, the tenants included. So we do notify the property owner when concerns come forward. And we got a favorable response from them actually when they addressed it at that point. So if it continues, Depending on um, when this happens, too, we can let the um, property owners in the neighborhood know that in the wee hours, like calling RCMP for sure, RCMP have the ability to enforce our bylaws. So um, they can write tickets, they can write um, enforce the bylaws. So we can encourage the neighbors at the unruly hours to certainly make the calls to the RCMP. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Any more questions? Call the question. All, all those in favor? Opposed? Carry. Could you please go get Mr. Tron for me? Councilor Tron. Thank you. 